Well, we had the go-home show for AEW, and if you're a fan of wrestling, boy, have I got the show for you. There was so much good wrestling on this show. Brian Danielson beat Rocky Romero. Excellent pro wrestling match. Use the Tequila Sunrise finish. Great back and forth with submission attempts, arm bars, etc. Excellent match. We had a brawl with the Inner Circle and American Top Team where the heels laid him out. And uh, the heels have vowed that Chris Jericho will be pinned at the pay-per-view by Dan Lambert. And tonight they said he's going to submit him. And so Lambert puts him in what he describes as a Boston Crab from Pro Wrestling from Florida in 1975. And uh, the heels took Jericho's arm and made him tap. Jericho did not tap to this Boston Crab, I might add. They, uh, they made him tap, but it was a great, great heat angle for the show. Ty Conti, Thunder Rosa, Anna J beat Britt Baker, Jamie Hayter, and Rebel. Too much Rebel in this match, especially when you had Jamie Hayter on the team. It was it was not as bad. Get ready for people to get mad. It was not as bad as the opener on NXT, but it was not good. But they kept it quick. Jungle Boy beat Anthony Bowens. Very, very good match. Anthony Bowens is great. Jungle Boy is great. Snare trap finish. And then Bobby Fish ran out. Bobby Fish has now been sent out by Adam Cole, of all people, to take out Jungle Boy. They will be wrestling on Rampage on Friday. We had Wardlow squashing Wheeler Yuta. Hey, listen, if you love squashes, it's hard to screw them up. Unless you're on NXT 2.0. They screwed up a squash match on that show. But anyway... (laughs) It was a uh, squash match. And then the Hardy Family Office beat up uh, Orange Cassidy. So it is uh, it is Matt Hardy versus Orange Cassidy Friday in a Lumberjack match, a match originally scheduled for the pay-per-view. Now it's going to be on Rampage. Leo Rush and Dante Martin beat Matt Seidel and Lee Moriarty. This was a very, very good match. You had Dante and Lee Moriarty as the young guys just doing all this crazy high-flying, which looked awesome but not exactly polished. And then Leo Rush and Matt Seidel are polished. They got in there. Man, this was some good stuff here. And Dante hit the double springboard moonsault pin Moriarty. Very good match. Pac and Dax Harwood probably had the best match on the show. They had everything in this match. They had had violence, physical violence. Dax's chest is bleeding everywhere. Pac hit him with a top rope high angle brain buster, which... I don't know if I want to see that ma- that move in every Pac match, because someone's going to get killed. And finally, at the end, Pac put him in the Brutalizer. And the moment he puts him in this hold, Dax furiously submits, because he doesn't want to get hurt prior to the match on Saturday night. And then the lights went out. Cash Wheeler, Malachi Black, Andrade all beat down Pac. Cody and the Lucha Brothers made the save. So we have a match for the pay-per-view. And then the main event was the Kenny Omega Hangman Page contract signing. Uh, people, a couple of blokes on Twitter, are you going to cry about this contract signing? Well, no, you moron. You don't complain about something that they rarely do. You complain when they do it every other week. This was a good contract signing, and it ended with the cameraman. Speaking of, uh, this was not actually uh, Survivor Series 97, but it was the build to Survivor Series 97 when they did the uh, gimmicked uh, camera operator to open the door for Helen a Cell to lead to Undertaker and Shawn Michaels getting out, which actually made sense. And uh, they, the cameraman here ends up being Don Callis, and he waffles Hangman Page with the camera. Hangman's bleeding all over the place. Uh, Omega gets his blood and signs the contract. Total old-school, simple contract-signing heat angle. I thought this show was great. Great go-home show. You know what's weird about it, too? One last thing, Mike. What's that? They had a go-home show a long time ago. I think it might have been one of the early go-home shows from one of their early pay-per-views. And it was like no wrestling to speak of that was any good. It was all video packages, all angles. And you want to build up your pay-per-view with video packages and that sort of thing. But it didn't feel like a dynamite show because there was no good wrestling. Well, they learned their lesson. This was like a great go-home show. There were angles, video packages, and also this was one of the best wrestling dynamites in a long, long time. Just a a great go-home show. 
I thought so, too. And they did all that without giving away a big match. You know, if you think about it, yeah, you started off with Brian Danielson against Rocky Romero, which for a lot of us, you know, that's a big deal for a variety of reasons. But bottom line is there was no super shiny thing on here. It was just solid segment after solid segment. Was everything perfect? Absolutely not. No, but... I mean, look how they kicked the thing off with Danielson and Romero. You got Romero and the best friends, you know, officially uh, all being uh, sucked into chaos by the decree of Kazuchika Okada. And obviously the best friends were Trent and Chuck were over there before as members of chaos. But, you know, they melded those things together. And then you get this great Brian Danielson, Rocky Romero, match, which set the tone of the show. And I think it sets the tone of where we're at in wrestling right now. The six woman, I thought, was it was way too much Rebel. And I love Rebel for a lot of what she can do as far as being, you know, the comic relief for Britt Baker. And obviously she serves a lot of purposes for that company behind the scenes. But. I would love to see somebody added to that package because Jamie Hayter is killing herself. Jamie Hayter takes more big bumps that I don't think people realize uh, until you see her out there actually working. I mean, she is working super hard, and I think they need another person there that gets Rebel out of the ring and allows somebody else to take some heat for Britt Baker, maybe can even team up with Jamie Hayter, you know, on a regular basis and be somebody else there to be a heater and to, to take away some of the heat from that group. Jungle Boy Anthony Bones, again, second week in a row, Anthony Bones has had a really good match. I don't know what's going on with Max Caster when he comes off the bench, but, you know, Bones on his own, it's kind of like Dante Martin where, you know, obviously the other partner, and in Martin's case, his brother is going to come back and you're going to see him back together. You know, you're starting to see, you know, where down the line, you know, Bones on his own, you know, could he's got a great look. He could be something. He obviously he has got the, the talk. It's about getting the experience in the ring. And he's going to continue to do that there. Wheeler Yuta takes a great ass kicking. I'm, I hope he's full time in AEW. I hope they continue to use him. He's great uh, as a young guy. You saw his potential. You also saw him take some ass kickings in the last two weeks that have been very good, especially with a guy like Wardlow, who's green. Leo Rush and Dante Martin and Matt Seidel, Lee Moriarty, I thought was fantastic. Lee Moriarty's one of the best underrated guys in the world. He was a great pickup for them. And now you can see why him working with Dante Martin was fabulous and Mariotti's got a lot more experience than a lot of those guys do on the ground you know he the Daniel Garcia's guys like that in AEW it's great and Leo Rush I hope he's done retiring because we need Leo Rush every week doing something he's a great promo he's a great presence you want to cheer for him you want you, you, you can put you in a position where you want to kill him and his team with Dante Martin I think is is fantastic and I think that's great I think Seidel with a group of Moriarty and somebody else I think that's going to be really cool too maybe it's just it's Matt's brother I don't know but I, I like that idea a lot too because the idea of the Seidel's and Lee Moriarty against 2.0 and Daniel Garcia that makes me happy Dax Harwood's one of the best. I don't know if he's one of the best wrestlers in the world. I'm going to say he is. He's part of the, I would argue, one of the best, if not the best tag team in the world. I am really looking forward to, you know, Lucha Brothers, which in FTR, hopefully they can get things gelled together. But Dax Harwood was amazing in this. Pac was amazing. These guys, or Pac was amazing. These guys, the, the brain busters were amazing. The Avalanche brain buster that Dax Harwood or that Pac used and then vice versa with Dax Harwood. I that match was so good. Dax Harwood is so damn good and that's not to take away anything from Pac. But damn, we see Dax Harwood just time after time after time do the small things that are just excellent and he can make anybody look good, let alone when you got a guy with that type of level uh in Pac. Omega and Page, I thought the contract signing was perfect. I thought it's what it needed to be. I thought Don Callis is a horrible human being. He is a scum of the earth. He is a pimple on the ass of professional wrestling. He is a huckster from Manitoba. That's just what he is. But he's incredibly great at what he does. I thought him, and like you mentioned, as soon as you saw the cameraman walk in front of the other cameraman in the ring, you knew something was up. But you're thinking, hey, that cameraman right there, he's got a goatee. What's going on there? And then you saw what happened. He lays out Hangman Page. They split him open, bust him open with the camera. Ha-ha, the big reveal. He pulls off the mustache. He pulls off the goatee. And there you go. They're signing 
Hangman Page's name in literal blood, and that was a, certainly a, a visual at the end. I'm sure some people will jump on that and they'll say they hated that, but I thought it was great. We got digs on on Ibushi or uh, about Kota Ibushi to Kenny Omega. So I mean, there was a lot of stuff I thought accomplished last night, and some of the stuff that was not perfect was still really good. And we're not even we haven't even brought up some of the video packages like Eddie Kingston and and CM Punk, and they had to pull apart in the parking lot which led to a great visual of Eddie Kingston breaking away and trying to make his way across the parking lot at Punk. We had the MJF Darby Allen promo that I thought was very good. So there was a lot of great stuff in the close to this show leading into this pay-per-view. CM Punk versus Garcia. Fast-moving, neckbreaker, leg subhold on... I got a P. P gets like... <laughs> <laughs> This was 10 8 21. Clothesline. <laughs> Pillman punches back and forth. How'd Pillman get in this match? <laughs> I don't know. How What's happening? Know? If you enjoy these videos, for just $7.99 per month, you can enjoy full length editions of The Brian and Vinny Show, Wrestling Observer Live, Figure Four Daily with Tom Lawler and Lance Storm. The Mad Men Podcast, Speak Now Pro Wrestling with Denise Salcedo and more, plus hundreds of archived shows, all in beautiful HD. Don't miss out. Join us today.